Hey there, hi there, ho there, I am Shut Up James. It is the end of 2022, so welcome to my first annual Top 10 Movie Reactions. Not only is this the first time I'm doing a ranking of my own reactions, it's the first time I'm doing a ranking of any kind. I'm really excited to start getting into movie and franchise rankings in 2023, so I figured we can get our feet wet at the end of 2022 with a ranking of all of the movies I watched this year. And if I have enough fun doing this, then maybe I'll make it a yearly thing. Just to make it clear, this is me reacting to the movies that I've watched on this channel. So this is not every movie I've seen this year, but it's every movie that you have watched with me. So thank you for watching. I guess this is the part where I can say if you are watching this video and you're liking this video and you're commenting on this video, then please subscribe to my page and turn on notifications so you can be reminded of when I do these ridiculous things. Apparently me looking at myself and watching movies with you wasn't narcissistic enough. I'm now going to rank myself having watched myself watch the movies with you. Okay, so you know when you're like looking up recipe online and the person who posts the recipe has like their whole life story first and you skip that? That's what this next part is about to be. So I started this channel years ago because I used to love doing modern trailers. I used to take old movies that I loved when I was younger and I would re-edit them into trailers that I thought better represented the movie in some way. Poltergeist 3, actually I ended up doing all the Poltergeist movies. Friday 13th, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, The Exorcist, The Faculty, Phantoms, The Thing. So that's how this whole page started, was like my love of those movies and wanting to do something fun with them, I guess. Eventually I took my love of trailers and started doing trailer reactions. And that was actually a lot of fun for a while until the trailers started giving all the movies away. And although I do love trailers, very much watching editing i don't know i'm just obsessed it started to feel stressful and a lot of the trailers started ruining movies that i i didn't want ruined for me you know so then i was talking to some friends and we realized that even though i am like this self-proclaimed horror fan there are way too many horror movies i have not seen so that led into doing movie reactions and that's why we are here today. So in 2022, can you believe that we watched 23 movies together? That kind of ends up being like one every other week, which it kind of blows my mind because there were some months where you got a movie reaction from me every single week and there were some where you didn't get any at all. I was busy. But before we get into the full ranking of my top 10 movie reactions from 2022, the top 10 and the worst, I will also be giving you the worst. But before we get into that, if you want to catch up on any of these movie reactions, if you have missed any of them, the link will be up above, and the individual reactions for each movie will be down below. I'm gonna run through them really quickly, and then we're gonna get to the countdown. So this year, in 2022, we started by watching Silent Night, Deadly Night from 1984, the remake, Silent Night, from 2012. Then we watched Terror Train with Jamie Lee Curtis, My Bloody Valentine from 1981, The Fun House, directed by Toby Hooper. Toby, <laughs> I do this every time. Trevor Herber. The Innkeepers, written, edited, and directed by Ty West. Then A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, The Dream Master, Chopping Mall, The Stepfather, The Mangler, Hello Mary Lou, Prom Night 2, The Evil Dead, Piranha 3D. We ended the summer with Tremors, Prey, which was the new Predator movie from 2022, Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs. Then we started getting into the kind of spooky season movies with Pumpkinhead, Ginger Snaps, Halloween Ends, The Original Night of the Demons, The Lost Boys, Christmas Bloody Christmas, and we finished the year with Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 2. All right, I'm excited, y'all. Oh, wait, before we begin, I got this shirt from the Halloween Horror Nights event in Orlando, Florida at Universal Studios. Look at the back. I wish this pattern was on the front. Anyway, it's a limited edition for 2022, so we can't end the year without talking about it. Okay, so here we go. Now this list has changed many times. The way I am ranking them is based on how I reacted when I first watched them and how I feel looking back at them now. Like how likely am I to rewatch that movie? All right, first up on the list, let's start with the one that I was technically revisiting. It was not a first time watch. I had just not seen the movie in a very long time. This is the 2011 film, The Innkeepers. I don't know what it is about this movie, but the reason I wanted to revisit it was because I just remember loving it so much back in the day, but I never, I couldn't remember why. 
fun characters, lots of atmosphere. It's very, like, creepy and moody, and loaded with palpable suspense. It's not flashy in your face with anything, any blood, any gore, whatever. It just manages to perfectly build the right amount of suspense from start to finish. So that one snuck in and made the top 10. Next movie on this list, Ginger Snaps. So I have said a few times on this channel, I'm not a huge vampire or werewolf movie fan. I think when I was younger, I was really introduced to paranormal movies like Poltergeist and The Ring, and I was introduced to a lot of slasher movies like Halloween and Scream. So I gravitate toward those, even as an old, old man now. But my friends would often quote this movie, And I can see your gaunch and they got sick of me asking what they were talking about, so I finally gave in and watched it. It's a dark-humored creature feature with surprisingly well-developed characters, and in my opinion, like, pitch-perfect performances. Everyone crushed it. And that brutal final act, oh my gosh. So, that's number nine. Next on this list, number eight, is the 1987 film, The Stepfather. I actually watched a lot of movies from 1987 this year, strange. That is also the year I was born. One thousand years ago. I think I was used to the 80s movies I was watching being very over the top and silly and campy, so this one really caught me off guard. Dark, suspenseful, it's engaging from start to finish. And the performance from Terry O'Quinn is incredible. So captivating. Anyway, next on the list. Of all the movies on this list, this one moved around the most. This is the 2022 film Prey. This one managed to be both epic and grandiose, but also very small and grounded. And in my opinion, it successfully reboots that franchise, but also with a protagonist that we can root for from start to finish. The parallel stories of the Predator trying to prove itself and our lead trying to prove herself, kind of, the, the coming of age of, of the two of them, and just the music and the direction, I just, it was, I thought it was really good. It does take a minute to kind of get going, which might be why it's it's not in the top five, but it originally was in my top five. The more I dissected these, I it, it moved probably from like number three or four to five to six and now to seven. A very fun watch though. Okay, the next one on this list, number six, the 1988 film, Night of the Demons. This is another one that was way higher on the list. It was higher, then it was lower, then it was back in the middle. Like, it was just, it's, this one bounced around. And I feel like maybe in retrospect, like this time next year, I'll look back and I'll be like, how did I put this at number six? Like, this should have been number two or three. I, but in this moment, looking at the other, basically from this movie on, one through six, I love. I loved these movies. For one reason, or a million reasons, or another, whatever, I love them. So it was very difficult to figure out how this top six looked. But Night of the Demons with Linnea Quigley and Stupid Judy was confidently campy and silly, but also very unique, fun as hell, and actually genuinely creepy and scary. There were actually scary moments. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. I needed Roger to live. The fact that I still remember Roger and Judy's names now, two months later, says something because I'm very forgetful. And it also takes first place for the most amount of characters that put lipstick in their breasts. <laughs> Intermission. We're halfway through the list. Do your stretches. Okay, again, the rest of this list I love, but you know what? Rankings gotta rank. Number five, the 1987 film, Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. This movie was crazy. Over the top, ridiculous, batshit crazy, on every level. Suspenseful and scary. There were times I was genuinely terrified. Great performances and the practical effects what are you talking about? I'm looking at you, Rocking Horse. The whole movie, it's like they took every genre and crammed it into this movie. It shouldn't work, but it does. Loved Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. That actually, I can't find the second copy. I only got it a couple months ago and I already lost it, but I got the VHS. Like immediately after watching that movie, I knew I needed a physical copy of this film of this masterpiece. This was so fun. The, and the actress who plays Mary Lou, phenomenal. <laughs> I'm gonna watch that tonight, probably. <sighs> okay, we're getting down. We're getting down to the wire now. Number four. And I know my friend Adam will be mad at me for this being number four and not being number one. This is the 1988 film, A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. I loved this movie. And it's weird because after I said I loved it, he was like, oh, thank God, because there's so many people who hate it. I don't see how 
anyone could hate this movie. When I was younger, I only ever got my hands on a few copies of the Nightmare on Elm Street film. So I really only ever got to see one, two, three, and Wes Craven's New Nightmare. So four, five, and six, I, I never watched. I don't know why, I just never did. So I finally got to sit down and watch The Dream Master, and holy shit, this movie was fun. Freddy and his flair for drama, like chef's kiss. Also, even though Rennie Harlan is like kind of a, a wacky director, I feel like he handles this very, very well. His cinematic style fit perfectly with the story being told. <laughs> and that soundtrack. I wanna be your proud angel, I wanna be I have not watched the movie since our reaction, whenever, how many months ago that was, and that song is still in my head. She's a bop. Insanely fun MTV era slasher movie with incredible practical effects, but it loses points for recasting Kristen. So this next one I loved from Go and have actually rewatched a few times. Immediately bought a physical copy and watched all of the behind the scenes footage, listened to the commentaries. I was shocked at how much I loved this one. Of course, I'm talking about the 1981 film my Bloody Valentine. These Canadian horror films, they they do it different. They just know what they're doing. Ginger Snaps, Black Christmas from 1974. This movie, like there's always a level, especially in this movie, of I'm a part of this small town community. Like I am one of them. Like these are my people, like I know these people and then terrible things start happening. Fun characters, very ominous atmosphere. The suspense never let up and that insane killer reveal at the end. My Bloody Valentine is one of my favorite holiday themed movies of all time. This is making me nervous. We are at number two now. Number two on my list of favorite movies that I reacted to in 2022. Number two on my list is Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs. A perfect mix of fun and fright. If you will. This is cleverly written and sharply directed. I feel like this, this and Wes Craven's New Nightmare were him fine tuning. Why did I just milk the cow? If you hold the head steady, I'ma milk the cow. <laughs> Forget that. This was Wes Craven fine tuning his directing and editing and writing chops because it was only a couple of years later that we got Scream. I... Scream. Oh, I actually have Wes Craven's Nightmare right here. I did a reaction to that on this channel too. I'll put, you know what? We'll pause for a second. I'll put the link for Wes Craven's New Nightmare, that movie reaction, up above. It was not my first time watching it. It was my cousin's first time watching it, and she's hysterical. Okay, before I go any further, before I give you my number one top favorite movie that I reacted to with you in 2022, I'm gonna give you some honorable mentions, some, some movies that almost made the list. The Evil Dead. The original Evil Dead was an uncomfortable, Un uncomfortable. It was just uncomfortable. It was a very uncomfortable experience. Every jump scare worked. It was shocking to say the least. It definitely gets points for originality and for like the, the A for effort approach. It had no budget, but we are still talking about it today. Another one that almost made the list was Pumpkinhead. Now this one, maybe I built it up in my head too much because I'm a big fan of Stan Winston, but this one loses me completely in the second half. Because in the second half, I was very bored. This one did almost make the list though for the first half of the movie and for making me cry. The last honorable mention is Piranha 3D. This movie was stupid. It kept being, it was in the list at number 10, then out of the list, and the number 10, then out of the list. So it, I was like, you know what? No, you gotta go. It was almost in the list for just being blatantly and unapologetically over the top in every way. Here we go. Number one. My number one favorite movie that I watched with you all in 2022 is... Tremors, the 1990 creature feature with Kevin's Bacon. It's a feel-good monster movie with fun performances, crazy practical effects, insane suspense, and a big heart. It's probably the most rewatchable for me of every movie on this list. The way it's able to balance the scares and suspense with the lighthearted comedy, you don't you don't get a perfect match like that very often. Like immediately after watching that movie, I needed a physical copy. Just like with Hello Mary Lou, just like with My Bloody Valentine, like I needed to own that movie in physical form. Got this from the archive in Connecticut at a punk rock flea market hosted by a local bakery. If nothing that I said made sense just now, I'll put the links in the description down below and you can see for yourself. But this is beautiful and I watched every bonus feature like 
obsessed. And it's crazy because it's not even, it's not a horror movie. Like, it is a creature feature, it's more action-y, and there's definitely suspense, but it's kind of every genre except the genre I focus on, on this page. But I loved it. I loved it. So that is my top 10 of the movies I loved. Let's now look at the movie, or movies, that I hated the most this year. This is not a top 10, we're gonna do a couple honorable mentions, and then boom, I'm gonna give you the worst movie, the one that I hated the most. First, Halloween Ends, for having the audacity, period. The ends didn't justify the means, pun intended. Silent Night, Deadly Night, part two. Epically lackluster. Also, honorable or dishonorable mention, Terror Train. I found Terror Train to be incredibly boring. There is no sense of urgency in that film. The characters are all incredibly unlikable, and the characters don't even like each other. They don't even like each other, why am I supposed to like them? And the kills were boring. The whole thing was boring. Loved the reveal at the end. Great twist, but if you have to cushion the movie with extended scenes of magic tricks, there's a problem. Okay, here it is. This is the, this is the movie that I hated the most that we watched together on this page the worst movie reaction from 2022 is absolutely the fun house from i don't know what fucking year it came out directed by turber herber this movie was so meh there was a complete lack of purpose it was like things were set up to just not go anywhere everyone is just there experiencing things, and all of the things are uninteresting and boring. The characters are not going through any internal struggles that that could even almost potentially carry us from beginning to end. The main character's brother is a little pervert, her parents are neglectful, but that's not ever a thing that comes up again. Just... just a waste, a waste of my time. <laughs> So that is it, that is my entire, that's my breakdown of all the movie reactions from 2022. My absolute favorite was Tremors. The one that could eat shit and die is The Fun House. Drink Richard River. This should go without saying, but just in case, this is my opinion. If you love these movies, I'm happy you love them. If you hate Tremors and you hate my top 10, that's fine. Like, it's, we're not supposed to have the same opinion on all the movies. I would love to hear from everyone in the comments, though. I do want to hear your thoughts on, like, initial reactions to watching these movies. Were there some movies that you watched and thought, eh, and then later were like, I love that, or vice versa? I watched Prey and thought, wow, but it kept crawling further and further away from the top spot. Because when it comes down to which movie I really want to rewatch, it's Tremors. It's My Bloody Valentine. It's The People Under the Stairs. <sighs> All right. I actually had fun doing that. I had fun revisiting these movies just now with you. So this might be an annual thing. I'll have to think of some, you know, some fun name for it. But in the meantime, Please go check out my other movie reactions. Please check out my modern trailers. Please leave comments. I love talking to everyone. As long as what you want to talk about is constructive. I had someone say that my my fake tan looked really bad and I was obviously a queer, but she spelled it Q-U-I-E-R? Q-U-I-E-R? I don't know. So if you're gonna insult me, at least spell it correctly. And also I know my fake tan looks bad. I comment on it all the time. Look, I'm two different colors. It is the end of the year. I hope everyone has an amazing new year. I am so happy the holiday season is over, but I'm also excited for next holiday season. I'm excited to get into more holiday-themed horror movies with you next November, December. But let's take a break. Okay, so like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. Check out all of the 1500 links in the description down below for all the stuff we just talked about. Thank you for watching this video and for visiting my channel. I am Shut Up James. Goodbye. And look, my little Chucky, my little leather face.